You know that life is pretty simple, right? Half the coin of life is not getting into trouble. Because when you're not getting into trouble, then you don't have to deal with the problems that trouble brings, such as guilt, shame, condemnation, lack of peace. The first thing that trouble takes from you is peace. It takes your peace. I don't know about you, but peace to me is like, it's worth more than gold and silver and pearls and rubies to me. Peace. It took me a long time to value peace because I had to go through a whole lot of drama, right? But the whole like, street thing that I went through in my younger years saw a lot a lot of drama right people fighting both both in arguments and police being called and a lot a lot a lot of stuff everything as a matter of fact was based on drama as soon as I woke up to the time I went to sleep everything every day was filled with problems right and I never had no peace right and somehow somehow the devil disguised all that drama as a good thing because that's what he does he takes bad things and he disguises it he dresses it up as a good thing uh he'll call it cool he'll call it meaningful whatever like he'll just um he'll convince you that this is like a good thing so now when i'm a little older a little bit more mature and whatnot peace is one of those things that I, I long to keep because if your mind and your body, everything is not aligned to, to having a good day, you're gonna you're gonna make bad decisions. Right? When you don't have any peace, what happens is is that you're living from a place of of um, it's almost like you have high blood pressure and you're you're, 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 you're feeling anxiety and all that. When a person feels all that kind of stuff, they're making decisions from that place. And when they make decisions from that place, often they're just trying to uh, suit their anxiety or whatever. Um, it, it, I don't know, it's just very unhealthy and it doesn't lead to life. It leads, it leads to, to a lot of problems, right? So, it, it, you know, life in general, it's like living right so that you don't have to live all that you don't have to live through all that garbage and chaos and all that nonsense right like if you just cut out the bad influences you don't have to deal with all the baggage that they bring to your table right the people I used to uh, deal with their baggage was my baggage you know if they had problems with somebody that would bring me in on their on their problems with that somebody now their problems have become my problems right and then you have to scoop them up from uh, uh, situations that, that they're in trouble and this and that. And it's like, it's just better to keep your peace. You know, I consider it to be better to be alone than to be surrounded by a bunch of hoodlums and, and stuff like that. That are just up to no good continuously. I'd much rather be alone. I'd much rather be alone. Um, and so there's two sides to the coin, right? And the, and, the, and the one of the sides of the coin, I'm speaking about it right now. It has to do with not wanting, not a, not wanting to be affiliated or connected to any of this, all these problems and all this drama on a daily basis, right? Now, alcohol usually is a recipe for problems and drama, scuffles and and brawls. That's you know, even the Bible backs that up, you know, and so. A lot of the things that we do on a daily basis that we feed ourselves in terms of uh, our habits, they either put out, extinguish problems, or they increase the problems. If you be drinking, if you be, if you be smoking, if you be popping pills and stuff like that, then what happens? Your brain is not functioning in a capacity where it can work out your problems. It, can, it, it, it doesn't. It doesn't understand your brain itself. Not that it doesn't have the capacity, but under the influence, it doesn't have the capacity right and so then you just feel like you need help from other people and other people are giving their their energy to you to try to help you but all the while drugs and alcohol is your problem because because if you remove that from your life a lot of your problems will go away your anxiety will go away your fear all this kind of stuff that that is rooted in drugs and alcohol and so I can't stress to you enough how many how many problems, drama, and all that kind of stuff it produces, drugs and alcohol, it's just the worst. 
And so people can be like a drug too. You can want to be around somebody that that is just as bad as drugs and alcohol. And, you know, maybe they give you a high every time you're around them, but man, do they bring you down. Man, do they bring you down. There's no good fruit. And what happens is that the younger people are, the less experienced they are, the more mistakes they make because they don't see the long run. You know, now as an adult, 35 years old, before I make a decision, I look at the long run. How many of you do that? How many of you look at the, 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 the whole movie and not just the, the clip of what you're about to do right now? The older you get and the more experience you get under your belt in terms of things going wrong and, and things not working out your way, the more you see things like turn out negative for you or bad for you, like you went out, you did something, and it didn't work out for you, the more you start to realize, all right, I got to strategize better. I got to plan better. I got to change me and change the way I go about stuff so that I don't force things into it uh, to being. I can't force stuff. So it's better just to cut loose. For example, you can't force somebody to love you. You can't force somebody to change. You can't force somebody to do a lot of things that people want to do. They want to control. A lot of people want to control other people and control stuff that is out of their control. So it stresses them out. They get loud and obnoxious, physical even. In the end, it's just more fruitful because in the end of the day, what you're looking for is fruit. Fruit is another word for results, right? I don't know about you, but results to me is probably the meaning of life you want to see results in everything you do right and you want the right results you don't want the wrong negative results if you get the wrong negative results then you obviously you got to change your habits whatever they may be right now i just got here to the gym and what this uh gym is going to do for me right now this exercise that i'm about to do is that it's gonna do a lot more than just one thing right yeah, you can talk about the cosmetics of how people look good or whatever. That's superficial. I'm talking about how it addresses, you know, your your health and your your uh, what's it called, like your anxiety and stuff like that. You get to purge out a lot of the things that you feel on the inside, all because you're exerting it, right? And you feel good afterwards, and it's a positive result. It is a bearing fruit, right? And so when you make a lifestyle out of making good decisions one after another okay you start with the gym you, you read your bible you spend time with god notice everything i'm saying is positive you listen to good music a lot of you are in a lot a lot a lot of bondage the bondage that i speak of is a it's a a, a world that is a, like a fantasy world that music creates for you music has the power to draw you in into a, an atmosphere and a world that is not based on reality so you make decisions from this fantasy world and it gets you into the devil's realm it's called witchcraft a lot of music out there has the potential to draw you in to to places that it's filled with destruction and death. That you know, the devil was the worshiper in heaven. He understands how music works, and music is more than just sounding good to the ears. It goes into the brain, and it it, it, it touches keys in the brain, in the brain, in your mind, and certain parts of your brain highlight. They they turn on, and and it's like you start doing one of these. Because now it's not just sounding good. Now it's affecting your, 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 your mind, right? Your brain. And then you turn on different segments of your brain. And it's almost like you are changing the person. You're bringing that person from where they're at to where you want them to be. And the 
the product, the byproduct is music. You're drawing them in. What I'm doing as a byproduct to change you right now is this video. I'm giving you wisdom and understanding, clarity, clarity and vision. I'm turning on parts of your brain the same way music does. I'm turning on parts of your brain that make sense and you're like, yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's true. The, the, the end result would be for you to say, I got I to gotta cut some stuff out. I can't. I can't continue in this way. Because the fruit and the results is, I, I, just, I, I keep seeing depression be part of my life and I keep seeing darkness and negativity and and I, I just don't feel right on a daily basis and I just want out I want out and you have no idea that a, one of the biggest byproducts that, that keeps you there is music and I challenge anybody and everybody to play positive music do it for for uh, today the whole day do it today Positive music. I was going to say 30 days, but hey, you know, just do it today. And, um, and nothing but positive music. And when I say positive music, I would prefer that you listen to Christian music because it's it's anointed and it's powerful. And it's speaking to God and God is the author of positivity. And he basically wants to change your life to look like his life, you know. But a lot of your decisions are keeping you in the funk. One of them is what you watch on television. Another one is what you listen to on, on music, right? Gossip, all this other stuff that, 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 that people are around you, affiliated with you, um, slander other people and all that, all that, it's venomous to you. It's poison because it keeps you entrapped in this cycle and this um, being that you... you you're affiliated and connected to all that vileness. It's not fruitful to be around all that. So why are you expecting results of a person that does a lot of good decisions on a daily basis? I go to, I go to the gym. You know, maybe you write down your thoughts and you do a little poetry or you do a little artwork or you listen to a lot of Christian music, and you read your Bible, and you pray a lot, and then, you know, there's so many hours in the day, so basically, you, you maybe you do all those things on repeat, you know, or you'll talk to people, help people out, that, that, that's very beneficial, when you help people out in minor little detailed ways, that in turn blesses you, gives you value, gives you value to, to value other people. And when you help them, you're helping yourself in tremendous ways. You go home with a sense of self-esteem and confidence. And I help that person. And what happens if you duplicate that, those good deeds? Duplicate it, you know? Even if they tell you no. I've asked people, hey, can I, you need help with your groceries? You want me to put uh, help you put them in the car? No, no, I don't want your help. Hey, God bless you. I hope you have a great day. And you keep it moving. So you don't allow that to be a stumbling block for you not to do it again, right? You know what I mean? Because um, you have to understand that people are going through their own trust issues. Their own walls are up. Their own securities in jeopardy. Their own mental state may not be all there. And you, you a stranger, wants to help them. And they're thinking, you want to jack me you, you, or stick me up or something like that. And so don't take it personal. It's not like, oh, I don't want your help because it's you. It's not like that. It's just like their insecurities are like, oh, I think you may do me some harm and I don't really know you. So I'm just going to say no just to be safe. All right. I'm going to go in the gym right now. I'm going to have a great day today. I'm going to have a great day today. And I'm going to do it on purpose. All right. it's, I'm not going to leave it to chance. I'm going to have a great day because I'm going to do it on purpose. And... Each and every choice that I make is going to be defined by having a great day. So, you know, I'm going to start off by going into the gym. And then after that, I'm going to read my Bible, right? I already paid my bills this morning. Meaning, as soon as I got paid this morning, I uh, paid all my credit cards, right? I hit them all up because it makes me feel good that I'm on top of things like that. When things are on top of me, it makes me feel 
insecure, burdened, stressed out, makes me feel like I'm behind on things. And so when I get to stuff and I check things off and I say I did it, I feel better. So something as simple as that will make you feel better. If you have yard work that you need to do, if you have things in your backyard that, that need fixing or your house is cluttered or if it's a mess, man, just by cleaning it up, man, I kid you not, you'll feel better. You'll feel accomplished. And if you tie that decision to another decision to another decision, then you make a lifestyle out of feeling good and being and being good. You know what I'm saying? I always say, and I'll never stop saying it, good equals good and bad equals bad. Because I know that the devil's a joker. And he tries to say good equals bad and bad equals good. So come on. If you do good things, good results will come from it. All the time. You'll feel good on the inside. You do bad things, 10 out of 10 times you're going to feel bad. You do bad, you get bad. You do good, you get good. All right, God bless you guys. I love you.